Okay. Hi guys. Hi everyone. Welcome to Joiners. Welcome to a new online experience. I'm really, really glad to be here. Uh, but uh, I, because I'm not alone, and so I would like to to introduce my event mates right away. Alessia Niaccarini, how are you? Ciao, everyone. Thank you for coming today. I'm very good. Thank you. And thank you for inviting me. Uh, for Alessia, is a, a welcome back. Yeah. <laughs> 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 because it's not the first time that no. Alessia uh, is uh, is here with uh, with us. Emia, Deputy Regional Marketing Director at QS, and uh, we have also Cash Patel. Hi, Cash. Welcome Hi. to join us. Pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me. Commercial, to... Good Commercial Director at QS, and you you we will tell us your experience. With uh, with an MBA, uh, Alessia Cash. I I need another minute uh, just to present myself. I'm Giuseppe. I'm the presenter of this uh, event. But uh, believe me, I I'm looking forward to switch from the presenter mode to uh, listener mode because we have a lot of things to 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 hear today. Uh, we want to explain. We want to delve deeper into the world of MBA and so duration required requirements, costs, but also school, and most of all, uh, opportunities. This is a great opportunity because today you will have the possibility to speak with Alessia and with Cash. So please don't be shy, guys, and turn on your cameras, activate your microphone because you have the possibility to, to speak with us, to uh, ask us uh, anything instead of typing your curiosities, your doubts, your questions in the chat below. And so uh, if you if you want, you can turn on your cameras and uh, we will see uh, in, in, in your face, we will see your faces and uh, believe, believe me, it's better also for uh, for us, I I will give the floor. I will give the floor to Alessia and Cash in uh, in a while. I just want to suggest one thing: take the best to uh, from this experience. Uh, it's a it's a really great opportunity because MBA is a uh, we, we we have said this before. It's a specific topic. But this is also a great opportunity for your study path. It's a great experience. And so I'm I'm ready. Alessia Cash, the stage is yours and good luck. Thank you. Thank you for the introduction. I will uh, ask Giuseppe to share um, a very uh, small um, brief, his uh, PPT, just to uh, stay on track uh, with the time as well, um, and to cover all the topics that we would like to share with you. Uh, I will ask uh, Cash to um, uh, join uh, me and the presentation and give uh, his advice uh, and uh, tips for you guys. So today we are talking about MBA, this monster called Master in Business Administration, uh, which lately in the last decade became very, very popular, at least uh, in all of the uh, fancy finance and newspaper companies, new employees. Uh, this is really, really um, interesting topics. And uh, let's uh, take some uh, time and uh, discover more. Duration, requirements, cost, and opportunities. So um, what we are going to cover today, the agenda is uh, divided in, let's say, five parts. And we will uh, um, talk about what we need to evaluate before choosing an MBA. Talking about duration, requirement, cost. Uh, Talking about which are the best business schools in Europe, um, or and then uh, the opportunities after an MBA. 
we 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 decide to invite someone that run an MBA actually because um, even if it's seven years that I'm working with QS talking about masters PhDs MBAs. Uh, Unfortunately, I never got the chance to run one. So I said to one of my colleagues, please come and uh, and uh, speak, from, uh, speak from your perspective and your experience. So firstly, I would like to introduce uh, uh, Cash, which is an, a global MBA graduate at um, uh, Allianz Manchester Business Schools, which is actually one on the top 20 business schools in Europe. Uh, just because uh, we are going to relate this to the best business schools across Europe. Why we decide to invite Cash? Cash uh, got, can you just give me the next slide, please, um, uh, Giuseppe? Thank you. Um, he is a commercial director at QS. And this is the reason why we, we, we decided to um, invite him. Give me the next slide, please, Giuseppe. Uh, is because of his experience. Uh, um, he got over 15 years of experience working within the sector. Um, so his, um, his most impactful work um, has been partnering with international universities and governments um to review and support the improvement of the international student recruitment of uh, efforts and then uh, internationalization of their scientific research to develop a partnership at national and national level partnership so his background in student recruitment and marketing and uh, and the 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 the, the exceptional um, um, uh, experience that he gained uh, to be the foundation of either education knowledge uh, helps us to give you an overall, uh, um, let's say, a, a more specific overview from a multitude of, of perspectives. So from uh, as a new university recruiter, as an advisor, as an employer, and an MBA alumnus. These will help you even to address different questions. For example, what the business schools will require from me? Uh, what I, how can I impress them? How can I can I uh, write the the, the 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 correct application, which is you know the most uh, interesting tips that you can give us? Or as an MBA alumnus, what was the 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 most difficult period during the, the your studies? I mean, different perspective will help you to reach your goal. So let's go ahead let's start with the topics with the help of cash and thank you again for joining us. Mm. So first of all, you will face the big question, which is what do you need to evaluate before choosing an MBA? So why I am, <laughs> am I choosing an MBA? So I don't know where are you in uh, your research so if you are in the beginning steps or, or the final stages, but anyway, you may already address to yourself certain questions like uh, what kind of support network is available from a, a perspective business school? Is the business school or the university strategically located because you might would like to move abroad or if not, what is available in your area? Does the program that I am considering offer opportunities, you know, for applied learning experience? Does the program I am considering offer a global perspective? And what will be my return of investment? In the end, it will work to, you know, spend all of these efforts on run an MBA. So I will ask now, Cash, if it's, I mean, uh... well, I'd like to add one thing if I could. Yes, of course. Before, but when, you know, for the students listening who want to study an MBA, you have to think about and ask yourself why. That why do you want to do an MBA? Um, 
a student today has a whole range of different opportunities and options available to them. MBA is one of them. Um, but it's why, you know, what are the career outcomes that you're looking for? Um, typically, students study an MBA for three reasons. Um, one is, you know, to get a, a promotion, to get go for a bigger salary. Another one is to move um, internationally, so physically relocate to another country. And you can use an MBA to do that. And um, the other one is to move industries, so switch to working in a different sector, a different industry. These are the three big reasons, typically, why students study an MBA. And for everyone listening today, it's like you need to think about that for yourself. Like, why do you want to do it? Um, and depending on that answer can then lead to the next set of questions, which is what you've got here on the screen. Right? So it's then, well, depending on why you want to do it, what do you want? Is it your network? So MBA programs, studying at business schools, you know, one of the most valuable things you will get is that network of connections, those contacts, because we know in the business world, your knowledge and your ability is one thing, but also those that um, those connections, those relationships that you develop with other uh, MBA students who are working within industry, who then go on to those high level careers, they're they're your peers at that same level, and they give you those those top connections, absolutely. Um, and then there's a whole host of things, right? You know, so what support? You're, everybody will have their own individual circumstance. Some people on the call um, may have children. They might be working full time, and so they want to be studying part time. Um, what we're speaking obviously today in English. Most MBA programs in, or international MBA programs are, are taught in English. Um, but there will be certain schools, business schools out there that teach in their native language, depending on you know where, where they're located in the world. Um, and so do you need that language support as well? Um, you know, in terms of is the university strategically located to enhance the future career opportunities? What are those graduate outcomes? Um, some of those are very much tied to your why. If you know you want to switch industries or if you want to get into a particular industry, is that university, is that business school aligned to that industry? Now, you will know that many business schools are, you know, very finance orientated. So they work well within uh, banking and finance. Other business schools are very technology orientated. So they work well with technology partners and, and development on that side and innovation. Others are more aligned to sort of medical um, industries. Or, you know, each business school has its own specialty area and USP. And you then need to sort of start to build that into your decision making and your research to say, well, where should I go? That should lead that will lead me to my perfect career. What was your why? So yeah, so for me, my why was about progression. So the point of me starting the MBA, I'd been working within higher education for about 12 years or so. And I'd already worked at a university for almost 10 years. Um, so then it's about, well, what do I want to do career wise? I love the sector. I love the higher education sector. So I will always stay within the sector. But if I ever worked back at a university, I would need that master's level qualification really to progress in the career there or even within the private sector side so the pri the non-teaching side of of higher education you would need some sort of master's level qualification to progress um also at the time when i started the mba i was in the consulting team um and so what that is actually one of the prerequisites of the role itself is to have a master's level qualification does it have to be an mba it could be in any any um any subject but for the students listening on the call um you know many roles many jobs will probably require a master's level qualification and so it's always good to have that yeah so for me it was about that progression um i didn't need to switch industries i didn't need to relocate geographically around the world for me it was about that progression and to give me more credibility um for i don't know whether anyone on the call is is a consultant or in management consultancy or 
even hopes to go down that route. When you're in front of a client, you need a certain level of credibility. Qualifications can add that, particularly from you know, reputable, well-ranked institutions or institutions that have a good uh, reputation for what they specialize in. Um, and so that's that was my my why. It was it was to develop that professional aspect of, of my sort of skill set, really. Nice. Thank you, Cash. Uh, not sure if there's any questions related specifically to this, or if not, we will continue and then there will be like um, a section for question yeah. and answer anyway. Um, any questions so far? Not, not so far, but uh, okay. Cash, I don't know if you are curious to know uh, which is the study path of our participants. So, so guys, if you if you want to share with us, um, maybe in in the chat, which is your study path, your study experience? Uh, yes, this will help to address uh, maybe yeah. more specifically uh, some uh, some answers. Don't don't be shy. I yeah. <laughs> I'm oh, I I'm curious to know which will which will be the first phase we will see <laughs> today. Yeah. Today in, on Zoom. Well, there's a few questions. It'd be good to know. Um, so what what it is that they've studied already? At what level? Maybe some of the participants are already working. And so how many years of managerial? Yeah work experience they have would be you know, that would be good to know and then maybe their why you know do they want to switch industries go for career progression or you know relocate geographically around the world like why do they want to study as well because that can always yes um spark a good sort of conversation for example elisa uh i don't know if uh, she is studying web design or she she did web design at, at Fine Art Academy, uh, Peter, Economics and Management. Mm. Yeah, but both of those have great sort of management career paths because you can design, but then you could lead a team of designers, take on more of the manage managerial aspect in terms of pitching for tenders, um, client relationships, you know, all of that aspect. You know, there's a, a, a big sort of profit and loss accountability when it comes to managing teams and a design agency so that could be a, an, a a path going forward economics and management there's a whole host of you know the mba is, is relevant to so many different aspects there if you go into consulting go into advisory you know work for governments all sorts there's so many opportunities there even in management engineering again similar to the, the design aspect managing an engineering sort of firm um, or whatever it may be in terms of project management, all that sort of stuff. You know, it's it's all applicable. And there's one thing I, I didn't mention before either. When you do study an MBA, everyone has a specialty area. You know, everyone already has like one key specialism that they are already or have already either studied or practiced in in terms of their career. Um, so for me, for my bachelor's level, I studied law. Um but for my career, I didn't go into law. So I'm not a lawyer, I'm not a solicitor or a barrister. I went into marketing. So my specialism area was really the marketing side of things. Um, and that's what I took to the MBA. So, you know, the marketing module um, that I studied, you know, was great. I enjoyed it. It's because it was already what I do. Um, but for other colleagues, you know, there's the design marketing element that could work for Alicia, for Petar, in economics management, maybe the finance piece would work. For Luca in engineering, well, actually, maybe the operations type modules would work. Um, certainly a lot of, sort of project management, Lean, Six Sigma, efficiency type principles will maybe come quite easy um, to, to Luca. But yeah, everyone has a specialism that they bring. Kesh, how many yeah. modules usually an MBA has? Um, it varies from university to university. Um, but the structure that I studied under, um, there were three um, modules per semester. And then there was two semesters a year. And then there was sort of longer modules as well. So we had two long modules. 
Um, so one was the the live business project. Um, so you're working on a real life sort of scenario. And then the other one was more sort of core skills. Um, so you'd cover little frameworks like Scrum and things like that, which are applicable across all modules. Um, but then you're sort of taught, um, you're taught them as one-offs. Um, you could reduce that. I mean, the benefits, I studied it part-time um, hybrid. So it was online, but for every module, there was three days of face-to-face -face, um, workshops. So you'd have to go to campus and, and do those workshops. Um, and we typically put, when, when you say there's three days, they would typically be back to back. So you'd be on campus for six days in a row and do both sets at the same time. Um, but yeah, I don't know how much you know about the Manchester MBA and the uh, Alliance Manchester Business School, but they have study centers all around the world. Um, and so there was about five or six when I was studying with them and in the second year, because this was a part-time degree, in the second year, you could then opt to choose to study a module at a specific location if it was run at that location. Um, unfortunately for me, um, I didn't get to go because we were in the middle of the pandemic at the time. Um, so I started, I, yeah, I started studying in, in 2019, graduated in 2021. Um so I was sort of like in the middle of all of that. So the first year was very much as you would expect. It's the normal sort of tuition sort of schedule. The second year was where there was issues because we couldn't travel. I still did those modules um, with colleagues from other study centers, but they were online. So you miss out on that face-to-face -face interaction. You miss out on developing those relationships with your peers, which you then develop into networks once you've, you've then graduated um so yes I, I did unfortunately i do miss that part of that opportunity i didn't get to do um, but it's now back up and running you know so anyone studying that type of format i would definitely recommend you at least try doing at least one module overseas or another study center um it's what it'll be well worth the experience good thank you, thank you. and just because we were talking about duration and um, um, I would like to introduce um, uh, the other slide um, uh, because I mean we need to clarify some aspects I will just introduce this because uh, MBA programs can take anywhere from one year or to five years to complete depend what you uh, decide to go for uh, there are just um, write a few it's like a guideline like if you want to go for a full-time MBA then it's two years and then there is part-time MBA uh, but there is like the weekend one so it's up to five years and then the executive uh, and then the global uh, depend on what you would like to run obviously and if no other pandemic will uh, eat us, so you might <laughs> you might need just uh, just the 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 the, the typical uh, competition time. Uh, we need to even uh, to consider, and Cash already explained us um, in uh, details that uh, to be eligible, uh, you need to have. Um, uh, a bachelor degree from um, recognized universities uh, or something equivalent um, and you need to get uh, at least three years in experience in a managerial man managerial or professional or technical role and uh, GMAT and obviously a good knowledge of English language because all of uh, MBA programs um, are in English. Um, another painful point will be the cost. The reason why uh, this, uh, the, the MBA is like uh, um, an only monster is even because of the cost. No, uh, it's not something that uh, everyone can uh, deal with. Um, acquiring an MBA means spend from, uh, you know, thousands pound euros dollars, depend from where you are based, till uh, 
you know, two hundred thousand, depend uh, the, the 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 program that you decide to attend and the the the, the business schools that you are choosing. Where are you based? I mean, depend from lots of factors. So obviously, we need uh, you need uh, to. Um, get clear your return of investment if you have a family if you um i mean have already your return of investment is even a timely um uh, wise it's not just uh, it's not just talking about cost but even the time that you will spend the studying the the, the all of your efforts um so obviously we are when we are talking about an mba we need to thinking about uh, don't bite off more than you can chew. In, it, in, it, in Italy, we are saying non fare il passo più lungo della gamba. We need to 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 be conscious that we we need to to you know step by step. Um, cash. Um, when you had you know you faced that uh, that. Um, choice uh, and uh, when you evaluated at the time of your return of investment uh, what were i mean which kind of uh, of um, mm, uh, things you were thinking about i mean obviously you have a family you, you had the time you you already worked uh, i mean how you uh, evaluate this uh, this point yeah it, it's it's very hard um to think of all the different options that you have available to yourself, right? So for me, I was working full-time um, for QS at the time when I was doing my research. Um, I could have stopped working to study full-time. That was one option. I could have, I mean, I ended up um, working full-time, but studying part-time. Or the other option available was to work part time and study part time. Um, I was fortunate in that QS sponsored me through the MBA, so they they paid a chunk of the the um, the tuition fees, and you know, so I sort of paid the rest. Um, so it worked out quite well because I then got study leave on the days that I needed to, but still had to study my own time afterwards. I didn't really have the English language issue because I studied in the UK and English is my first language, so I didn't really have to do that. On the GMAT side of things, um, Manchester, they do accept GMAT, but if you don't have one, you can do their own in internal test. Um, so that's what I actually ended up doing rather than studying for, studying for a GMAT itself. Uh, and then the experience wise, I had that um, already, so I didn't really have to worry too much about that. I knew for most programs, I would have the entry requirements and the entry criteria. But the cost was the key factor here um, for me. You know, there were a few different programs that I liked and that I thought would actually be really suitable for, for myself. Um, there was the one at Imperial as well, um, the weekend MBA um, that they have. Um, but I, I sort of settled on Manchester one because I'm from the area already. Um, so I was originally grew up not that far away from the university. So I knew it very well. And I knew then that being on campus would mean that wherever I go, I would have somewhere to stay at home in the family house, which then reduces my cost of studying um, because of all of those non-tuition fee costs, I would have to incur not my employer who was sponsoring so even if i chose to study one of the modules um overseas and go for that workshop overseas i knew that i would have to pay for that fee uh the travel the hotel you know everything um rather than being reliant on someone else so that was another one of the reasons why i studied at manchester also the fees there were a slightly bit cheaper than some of the other universities some of the other business schools so for a well-ranked, well-reputable uh, business school, um, the fee was quite good, quite proportionate, really. So I thought actually that was that sort of worked well for for me. Um, plus, I also then got a scholarship as well, so um, there was a slight tuition fee discount based on my experience and, and previous grades and so on. So, um, so yes, it all worked out quite quite well for me. 
but duration is another sort of factor as well. I didn't want to do a MBA which would take five years because it would feel like I was studying for such a long time. I wanted to do it quite quickly. And typically, if you're doing a part time um, based MBA or an online MBA, it would be over two years. Um, so that worked out quite well because it was quite reasonable. The workload was still quite high, but manageable in terms of the the program layout and the, the amount of hours you would have to spend. Thank you. This is a very uh, good overview of, um, of your is, experience. I can just add one more thing on ROI. So I just look yes, back at the please. screen for ROI. On the Top MBA website, there is an ROI calculator. Um, so you can students can sort of fill in the details, current salary, expected sort of salary afterwards and you can actually calculate the roi so you know is it worth applying for another job now and accelerating on that career path or is it worth studying the mba maybe staying in the same job studying the mba for two years and then accelerating on that career path afterwards um so when you then look at the results of five years 10 years 15 years what's the difference between doing the mba and not doing the mba um so yeah definitely use the ROI calculator. I, I did at the time as well, that calculator's been running for quite some time now. So, um, so yeah, so I, I used that and it was worth it for me. Did, did the, the, the calculator reflect yeah, what I, I should I should go back and double check some of the figures. <laughs> exactly. It, yeah, it's worked in terms of I've had numerous promotions since. Yeah. I did. So I know that I've progressed um, up. I'll have to go back to see whether it aligns to what they predicted. Um, but uh, but yeah, the, the fact that I've had the promotions has meant yeah, that it's already been worth it for me anyway. Of course. Um, yes, I mean, the, the audience, um, uh, they might know the, the, the calculator is one of the uh, topics during our promotional um, campaign for the, the QS. So um, it's something that we always encourage to use as um, the matching tools or it, which actually was uh, your uh, suggestions earlier uh, to the, the, the career path for, for the, the people that join today. Um, yes. Exactly. Uh, we were talking uh, just a bit earlier regarding the which universities, business schools, is, is the right one for us. Uh, and you, obviously, based on um, lots of factors, decide to go from the Allianz Manchester business schools. Here, if you are thinking about the best business schools across Europe, uh, as us, as QS, which are mostly um, uh, known for the, the university's rankings, uh, we are showing you the first three, the top three, which is London Business Schools, HSA Paris, and IE Business Schools. But obviously, if you would like to know more, um, Giuseppe will uh, share the the link to the full uh, to the full rank uh, rankings, and uh, there is uh, eight European business schools uh, included in this uh, year ranking uh, of full time MBA programs. But obviously, this is just a part. Please go there, have a look to the rankings, um, uh, find out more. You can click on more details for each of the, 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 the university ranked. Uh, you can go to the landing pages, know more about their programs. Uh, I do think that at this point is not a, a suggestion, but obviously try to see each of them. Do not just focus on the top uh, three, top 10. Uh, there's a may uh, the right program for you even uh, in the top 50. Um, here are listed just the, 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 the best um, uh, business schools across Europe, but obviously you can, uh, you can have a, um, an overview of the um, world, uh, worldwide uh, um, regarding this. Uh, when 
arrived the point, uh, apart from the oh, lots of factors cash, cash that you already um, uh, shared with us, uh, um, I mean, uh, you were check. You know already. You were working for QS and all of the rankings, and so obviously, there's even uh, the decision uh, were even uh, not dictated, but anyway, there was like uh, already a path to to follow. You know, but well, yeah, uh, it's it's a strange one because when I studied the MBA, there was a group of QSers that ended up studying the MBA and at Manchester. But I was the sort of first to really proposition and propose to QS to actually fund it. Because they use some government funding available to also part pay fees and, and things like that. Um, but I still had to put a whole business case together um, to explain what it what the program is, um, what are the benefits to me, what are the benefits to QS, how much time it would take out of working to be able to study and, and all of these other factors and most of the business schools actually have a template um, business case that you could use when you're talking to your employees to try and get some of that some of that funding um my benefit is obviously i work within qs so i know these rankings very well um and so it i could easily look at the 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 rankings tables and sort of make a a short list of where I want to, to study. But you still have to speak to numerous other stakeholders, right? You still have to speak to the university, the business school representatives. You still have to speak to agents and other sort of people affiliated with the sector. You still have to speak to some of their alumni, some of their current students, um, some of their lecturers and teaching staff as well. You still have to speak to just general colleagues within the industry that you want to go and work in or already working in depending on what your why is um to see which schools have the best reputation for that industry for that sector um and you you know you have to sort of draw upon all of that knowledge to figure out where you want to study um and then and then decide from there you know you're creating a huge excel spreadsheet of all this information about each individual business school and program because at some business schools there'll be multiple programs that you'll want to study so you then have to decide between the program itself um and then all of those other opportunities you know the the why questions you know what are those international opportunities can you study at an overseas center is there a partnership with another business school do you get a dual award at the end of the studies you know, there's a whole host of different different things. And then you attend events, you meet the people in person, um, the representatives from, from the business schools, um, speak to other students that are also researching at the same time at these events, and you get a better idea then of, of what you want to do. And it's a long process, but you know, it could easily take 12 months, right, um, to, to decide what the right program is, where you want to go, um, and then also, you know, if, if some of these programs mandate that you have to have the GMAT, it takes time to study for that. You can't just sit the GMAT. You should definitely practice it before, you know, sitting the test itself. Um, so it takes time to to do all of that, that preparatory work and that research. Um, so, so, yeah, so I, mean, I was fortunate because I worked within higher education. For some of the students out there, you know, the, this type of session is the best type of session you can get to sort of start that research and then you carry on that conversation later. Because it's always difficult, you know, if you're working within uh, yep. um, the sector, you know, how to consult mm -hmm. this kind of rankings, yep. you know, where to look at. But if it's the first time that you are facing this kind of decision and you look at this big book, with all of the university listed and say yeah. what I'm gonna do now. Uh, yeah. I mean, he is yes, everything looks amazing. Uh, um, well, which is the key, you know, to read to read yeah. this kind of uh, of yeah. things. So it's the reason why. I mean, yes, you said something uh, very important. Let's like say I was very very lucky at the time. I mean, I was already I I. I 
you you were a step ahead basically to your um, compared to your colleagues uh, at the the, the 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 business school maybe yeah. because you already know what to do but for others could be difficult to so um obviously yeah, as i suggested take your time i mean uh, uh, talking to yeah. the audience uh, to read talk with the representative um may even uh, ask one more questions rather than uh, have any doubt yeah yeah and it all starts with the why like why do you want to study this because you know, even with these rankings um they're, they're obviously they're independently compiled because we we produce them not the university but there's so many subcategories like what you see here just on the slide now is the overall score and the rank but there's so many subcategories right there's um, you know, we we assess from a rankings perspective. We assess the the business schools and the programs on um, various indicators, so teaching quality, return on investment, sustainability. You know, there's all these factors, and they will all be different for each and every one of you, and you'll have different sort of importance on each one. Um, so yeah, so so you know that's the overview there. But if you clicked on full view, just on the right hand side of that tab at the top, uh, the full view, full, full view, full view. Quick, yeah. 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 So if you look across there, you've got overall score, thought leadership, return on investment, and if you keep scrolling to the right, there's more, there's more factors. Mm -hmm. But you can you can filter these rankings and say, well, you know, for me. As a new student, return on investment is the most important factor. And so when I reorder the rankings based on return on investment, ESCP were number one, I think, yep. And then okay. Mannheim Business School, SDA Bacconi, you know, there's a few different ones there compared to what the overall score is, because in that particular area, yeah. they perform better. So, and, and that all comes back to your why. You know, why is it? That you want to. Study. There are a lot of aspects, uh, cash, diversity, oh. employability, uh, yeah. entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship, yeah, so on. thought leadership. There's lots of different factors. You know, it ranges from research. So thought leadership is more research aligned. Return on investment is more graduate outcomes, career aligned. So, like, what's the salary uptake? The entrepreneurial aspect is all about well, how do they help you set up a new business idea? Um, there's lots of M lots of students study an MBA because they have a business idea. They just don't know how to take that forward. Um, employability again, very much on what's the graduate employment rate um, after you've you've graduated. You know how many students have a job within six months or twelve months after they've they've graduated. So it all depends on what what you want from it. Yeah, you know yeah. it's like you would filter these categories based on based on that. Alessia, is there a, a solution? Is there a, a moment? No solution in here. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, is there a place where uh, meet uh, university represents uh, to, to better know uh, about uh, the, the, the world of MBA? I know that uh, on 29 of February, yeah it's done if you want to tell us more two 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 times per year uh we're organizing um events for um, uh prospect uh, students uh, for mba and masters uh all around the world so there is two seasons basically one in spring and the other one um, in fall uh where we are traveling all around the world and bring um the universities and business schools representative all under one roof and invite the student to talk with them. This is free um, for students. We are uh, asking them to come over and talk directly with them. This will help them, obviously, on the, the not just on their research, but to get familiar with the process, with the, 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 the needs um, for the, I mean, they can have the all 
world just under one roof from business schools that from US, from Singapore, from um, all around Europe, just there. They can gather all the information, ask them to meet them may virtually again to speak in more much details about uh, the career progression, um, both uh, academic and professional. I mean, we organize these two times per year. Obviously, I am um, uh, sponsoring uh, this um, uh, event in Milan the next 29th of uh, February, where um, some of the top business schools will be um, at, the, at the event waiting for you um, and ask, um, and I mean, you can have um, a direct, uh, a direct, um, 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 sorry, uh, you can get the meeting, like a tailored meeting, one-to-one uh, -one meeting with the, 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 the university representative. This is called Connect MBA. It's not a proper fair where you can go, you know, browsing around the stands, but you can you can book your appointment and talk with universities attending. Um, but obviously, if you are not based in Milan, you are more than welcome to check all of the other dates um, all around Europe in the main uh, landing page where all our events are listed. Uh, don't be scared. I mean, this is uh, rather than uh, this needs to be a moment networking with the the the, the, the business schools attended with other uh, alumni um, or ex alumni. I mean, uh, with um, people that might help you, like Cash today. Uh, with us to um, have a better overview and give you some tips and advice regarding your next step. Um, in Milan, we will um, we will um, uh, organize a networking drink too to get this um, you know the feeling uh, of a bit more informal to have the chance to speak uh, you know with other colleagues there and have the opportunity to stay a bit more relaxed. But take this uh, as an opportunity to speak with all of the business schools, gather all of the information. They might give you the right way, uh, the right um, uh, the right. Um, uh, um, advice on how to write uh, the 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 um, success the most success, successful application, for example, or give you an overview, a different point of view, and you might decide to go for another program instead, just because uh, you had the the, the 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 complete vision of what you can get and all of the aspects that, that Cash um, share with us, like. They might they might give you um a different perspective, which is important for you to get the right decision and have that conscious decision that this is what I would like to do. This is uh, my why, you know, and uh, this is uh, this is important. So I always encourage you to be part of this kind of uh, event, and and to be honest, if at the time. <laughs> I mean, I'm talking even for masters, not just for MBA. Uh, there was a chance for me, like uh, personally, uh, um, I, I, of course, I would take the 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 the, the chance to be at one of these uh, events. Uh, so, so guys, please. you 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 have not any any choice. That you have to type <laughs> your email address here and register now. Yeah, the registration is um, mandatory. The reason why is because uh, the colleagues need to check upon your profile, I guess your profile, to see what you are doing, what you already studied, suggest you the best option, the university that fits you most, uh, because obviously depend uh, depend uh, your your education and your uh, career path. Then uh, they will suggest. Uh, you might would like to speak with specific university. You can ask them to book an appointment with that specific university if uh, um, uh, if you would like. So 
just send us an email and we will uh, be uh, more than happy to try to accommodate uh, uh, your needs. This uh, is a very tailored uh, event. So um, it's for, for professionals, uh, people that, uh, I mean, uh, would like to 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 go for this path, uh, and we know that it's difficult. Uh, we cannot give them like go and speak. You need a bit of um, of help to be to be to be there. So we are here for you. Alessia, I yes. shared the link, the specific link. In oh, thank the you. Chat. And uh, I would like to know if you you guys participants uh, are interested in this type of event and uh, if you are available to to come to to Milan. Alessandro, Lucia, Francesco, Marianne, Elisa, Pasquale, Cesare, Luca and Peter. Uh, if you if you if you want you can share with us your your opinion if you have any comments questions curiosities feel free to to ask us anything yes please in the meantime so sorry i need to there's another another link i would like to share which is the one to the topmba.com slash events it's pretty easy with all of the uh, mba events are listed from asia middle east europe uh, north america um there's any questions you would i mean there is cash in here that has this fantastic ex experience um, never too late but i wish i had time to to do that oh petar good petar if you if you want you can turn on your camera Feel free. Yes, I will try to do that. Okay, let me see. Oh, okay. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Great. Uh, thank Good you. Good afternoon. <laughs> I have uh, I have a question because I have been interested in some uh, business school and especially for 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 an MBA. And uh, obviously, as Cash was explaining before, the most. Uh, if we might say like the biggest step is the cost of it so how can you maybe manage the thing of uh, getting maybe a scholarship or navigating through all the different financial aspects of this since it's it's uh it's not only an investment in terms of time obviously but also in terms of uh, uh indirect costs that you will have if you yeah yeah for example to Paris or other cities yeah there's there's numerous options available to two students so scholarships are one um and there's a whole host of providers of scholarships a qs we have our own scholarships that we also give to students you you apply you you know submit all the paperwork your application and then it goes to a panel and then we reassess and then um award the scholarships where we can the business schools themselves um often have scholarships so you, you would then need to research all of those scholarships. And there's a whole range, you know, so sometimes they will have some, you know, women in leadership type scholarships. Sometimes it's because you've got a business idea that you want to take forward um, and they'll, they'll invest in an entrepreneurial style scholarship. Or sometimes it's based on your previous academic performance and your experience. And so then they'll often either discount the tuition fees themselves or provide you a scholarship, depending on, on, on the circumstance. So there's a whole range of scholarships, um, tuition fee discounts available. In addition to that, I would recommend definitely speaking to the business schools themselves. They often have payment plans to make it more affordable to actually pay for the fees itself. Um, mm -hmm. Or they'll have access or they can point you in the right direction of banks who can supply a loan and then you're paying it back on a a reduced rate over a longer period of time as well so it really does depend you know and then also look at your where you where you're living now or locally there may well be government support as well um often you know how i studied in the uk there was an apprenticeship scholarship that was given provided by the government um so there may be something similar where you are um 
or your employer may also provide some, maybe not all, um, but some of the funding towards towards the fees. So yeah, there's a whole range of different options. You just really do need to do the research on them. Where, where are you from, Peter? I'm from Italy. I'm based in Bergamo. It's near Milan. Maybe you will be familiar with it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> thank you. Yeah. So unfortunately, I don't know if there's anything from a government perspective locally um, in Italy, but definitely do the research. And I'm sure if you if you if you do attend the event, um, there'll be colleagues there that should be able to guide you a little bit more on, on the funding aspect of things. You can check better uh, on um, the Parnesina website too, because there's, um, uh, for example, there was for masters uh, um, in 2023. Uh, so, and there was like, uh, mm, some of the 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 requirements to list the in the in the um, in the website. So please have a double check. I'm not sure if they already published uh, something for two thousand twenty four, but uh, it's always worth to have a look or get it like the feed. So as soon as the news is coming up, you can get it. Uh, but uh, as Kesha were uh, telling you, uh, coming to one of the QS events uh, will allow you even uh, to apply for QS scholarships, uh, which the requirements uh, is uh, attend one of our events during the year. Then obviously you need to write your, um, uh, uh, I, I mean, your, your, um, you, Whatever you would like to apply for, you will need to 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 follow all the uh, the, the process. But uh, but it's always worth to give you a chance, um, the opportunity to do that. I can share with you the link to that too, just to give you an idea uh, to you and uh, the other uh, person that are attending today. So give me just a, a moment. And I'm sharing you the link. Uh, any other questions in the meantime? Don't be shy. Link in uh, in uh, the link for the the scholarships uh, the QS is um, offering uh, on the meeting chat. So click there and have a look. There might be something interesting for you. Anything from Elisa, for example, who who said before she she studying web design? Or from? Well, uh, I gonna have my buckler sorry it's not hi elisa nice to meet you to everybody uh i had my buckler uh, in march so i'm pretty ex exciting and i'm happy here for discover this handband and i never hear about uh, mba before so i would like to know what it was before uh, I want to thank you everybody to uh, know me what is it, it is. Um, and thank you for all the links for checking everything. So thank you. Thank you. I thank mean, you, it's Lisa. always uh, super good. Uh, as Cash said, um, apart from uh, your uh, direct experience, but it's always good to, to get all of the information well in advance. Uh, deciding to go for um, an MBA, for a master, for a PhD requires a lot of time, lots of efforts. So being already, already being interested and uh, to know more um is uh, means that uh, you always be one step uh, you know ahead of the other one so i'm encouraging you um to always uh, um try to follow all of 
the tips and the advice. This is not just for academic purpose, but even for professional advice uh, and it's always uh, super good to 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 be uh, here even if uh, you never heard before what uh, an MBA was so thank you Kesh if you want to share with us your LinkedIn uh, your LinkedIn no. profile link <laughs> in, in order to to keep in touch with you yeah sure and Alessia the yes same with you thank you i will do that in a minute if there's no other questions uh, i would like to thank you all and thank you cash for your time uh i know that you are super busy but i really appreciate it uh, that you being um with us today thank you very much and thank you giuseppe for hosting uh, this Thank you, Alessia. See you soon, obviously. <laughs> and Cash, thank you for your time. Um, thank you for your uh, your availability. It was a pleasure, believe me. Well, no, thank you to you both for organizing and giving me the opportunity to give back as well. So that's it's one of the things I do find rewarding as well, is actually talking back to prospective students and sort of sharing and, and so on, seeing them go on that that journey as well. So yeah, reach out. My link, I post my LinkedIn. Yes, thank um, you link so yeah connect if you if you need to if you want to thank you guys grazie ragazzi see you soon see you, see you soon right. and good afternoon good evening a presto bye ciao. thank you ciao, ciao. ciao.